I think generally data uh, is, is underused. It's about using it in a proportionate way for a policing purpose. Um, an example I gave recently is um, somebody who's travelling the underground for six hours. Why are they travelling? So they tap in and they tap out six hours later. What, why is that? Um, possibly lost, possibly vulnerable, possibly a pickpocket, possibly a predatory sex offender. Uh, at the moment, you know, we're all looking for these individuals, um, whether it be from a crime perspective, a vulnerability perspective. Um, but actually, for me, there's something that feels that there is an, uh, a missed opportunity to look at how we can use data in a better way. So that data at the moment, which presumably is available to Transport for London, TfL, yeah. can you access that data? Can, can, we have, can you say to them, can we have a look at everyone who you know, tapped in at, and then six hours, didn't tap out for six hours? Can you do that? So we need data sharing agreements and this is what we're working through at the moment as to how we can um, how we can use our data sharing agreements um, in a way that's a bit more future facing thinking about what we're wanting to achieve recognizing any civil li civil liberties aspects to it because yeah. whilst I might see that as favorable there'll be other people who don't see that as favorable. absolutely I'm a commuter I don't necessarily want to share my data about where I'm traveling with the police why should I well, that, oh, and then um, perfectly sensible question. And actually, we don't, we don't, we're not really looking for your data. We're looking for the data of the predatory sex offender. So we're looking for anomalous behaviour. So we're not looking for you as an individual. We're looking at the behaviour trends. And then the behaviour trends help us to then put it into the system to understand where we need to focus our policing.